Hello everybody and welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you guys for tuning in and stopping by. Great to have you all here. For everybody who's brand new, hello and welcome. My name is Nick. I'm a drummer and a multi-instrumentalist among other things. And we like to take a look at drummers who are better than us and have much better technique than we do. So that way we can break down their technique, analyze their form, so that way it's a nice and easy to digest way to understand. Ultimately use that to grow our understanding of drums and technique and make ourselves better musicians. So we've got a couple of different drummers that I've selected to uh, do some filming on today and this guy, I was watching this uh, playthrough a couple times and I realized honestly this is probably a really good drum uh, drum playthrough to take a look at. If you want to get a really good example of some like really nice natural drumming, what natty drumming sounds like, this is definitely a really good example of that. So we're going to be taking a look at Rings of Saturn's drummer. His name is Ryan Sinnott. I'm sure that's probably how you pronounce it and we're going to be taking a look at a drum playthrough he did of theogony which is one of their i believe newer songs i'm not 100 percent sure i'm not really super familiar with rings of saturn's full discography i have a couple of songs and a few albums that i was like oh yeah this is great but i just never really got 100 percent into them so we're going to be checking them out today and this guy's got some really great awesome technique that is really cool. It really shows you and displays what natty drumming actually sounds like. And it definitely does give you a lot of uh, a lot of perspective into exactly what it takes to put into getting that fast on drums and that technical. So let's dive in. Let's take a look and see what this man has to show us because I think natty drumming is pretty darn cool. And I think there's a lot of cool things that we could learn from this fella. So let's jump right in. Before we start though, I check my YouTube analytics as any good creator should. And only about 0.7% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. What are you guys doing with your lives? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. We do a lot of fun stuff and a lot of videos just like this on here. We're going to have a lot more fun content coming your way, so stick around. It's going to be a fun, fun journey. All right. Well, without further ado, ladies and gents, let's jump in and let's take a look and see what Ryan has to show us today. Got some six stroke rolls there. So he's got trigger drums on the bass drum. The whole top part, so a snare. Yeah, that's all 100% natty except for the bass drums. I wonder who mixed this honestly, because the mix is a little uh, thin. You'll notice too that the bass drums are not necessarily the cleanest sounding. Which is okay. Usually when you play live, it's not too clean sounding. But yeah, everything snare, toms, cymbals, and all that, that's all natural. No triggers or anything like that on it. Bass drums are triggered out. He's got pretty good power for the speed that he's playing at too. Just judging by his stick heights. Very good clean blast beat too. That's very clean. He's definitely using double strokes to his advantage here doing it with the uh, herdos and all that. And he looks very nice and loose. Wrist technique on the slow parts and then fingers when it comes to the faster stuff. And he's making a couple mistakes here and there, but it's not really that big of a deal. And honestly, it's very impressive with how he sounds naturally. Managing his power very well too and has good control. Because he's also the was their live drummer, so I think now he's the official drummer. Very good, very good gravity blast. Good control. Very consistent too. Man, 
that freaking hi hat is loud. At least, so everything's panned nicely. I will say that, as far as the mix goes. I personally would probably have remixed the drums a little bit so they weren't as thin, but I mean, it's not that bad, and it shows a really good, you know, solid technique that he's got. Very good posture too. And he's sitting on the edge of his drum throne, which usually you don't do when you're doing double strokes, but... Audio, audio, okay. Audio just kind of cut out, out of nowhere, so we're going to zoom back to three minutes. And just pick back up and listen to that. Yeah, just listening to his technique and all that, he's definitely got a really good handle on his double strokes. Everything sounds very clean. His hand technique is very nice and tight. Very good control as well. And very good posture, like I said. Yeah, that's very tight. Very tight. And even though he made a couple of mistakes in there, it wasn't that big of a deal. It actually sounded really cool. So, anyways, with all that being said, y'all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right into uh, the review. So, let's uh, let's take a look. All right. So, Ryan Sinat of Rings of Saturn. First things first, using his finger technique when it comes to the faster parts, most of the time it looked kind of like American grip from what I could see. Very nicely done, very well done. I thought it was very nice and tasteful. When it came to the faster bits, he was using a lot more wrist technique and he was using, you know, a lot of closed fingers when he was doing that just so that way he could keep his control and i feel like that's something that a lot of drummers do ignore because they kind of want to stick with one technique for the whole th you know the whole thing that they're trying to do and you don't have to stick with just one technique you know and and make that your entire thing you can actually switch up your techniques and make it a little bit more adaptable to your style it doesn't necessarily have to fit into a tight little box where you know yes i'm a wrist player and i'm only using wrist technique with closed fingers that's how i play you don't have to do that you can mix it up and you can you know if i want to go a little bit faster use the fingers if I want to go a little bit slower I can use the wrist you can do that and it's perfectly fine there's no problem with that and honestly having more variety in your technique is going to allow you to be able to have more creativity and continue to kind of push the envelope for yourself now when it comes to his foot technique he was using full leg when it came to the slower bits on his uh, bass drums and all that he was keeping his heel up and elevated and then when it came time to go a little bit faster he was using double strokes and he was dropping his heel down and allowing for that pedal board to have the max rebound which means that his spring tension is probably very high and he has it triggered out so that way you know he can obviously you know have max sensitivity on and then he can push the speeds to absolutely ridiculous levels and triggers as far as using that there's nothing wrong with that because yes you do actually have to play the notes for the most part you can set up triggers so that way you can hit it one time and it plays the entire pattern of bass drum or whatever you're trying to do and then you just kind of have to mime along to it you can do that and that's unfortunately what some bands out there have done this guy however this is completely natty everything that we were watching matched the audio that we were hearing it sounds really good and tight and a lot of that stuff that he was doing comes from long long hours of practice trying his hardest to keep things uh really nice and loose his posture was very good as well having good posture is essential as a drummer because you have to remember you're sitting there playing drums for hours at a time keeping good posture is absolutely necessary because it's about longevity at the end of the day yeah his technique is really good and you can tell that he's put in lots and hours Hours, lots and lots of hours of practicing so a couple things for you brand new guys out there just remember you're not gonna be able to play something like this just straight out the gate it takes a long time to be able to get to that speed and get to that level so just take your time practice work on getting the proper technique nailed down without injuring yourselves and you'll get there within you know within the perfect amount of time before you even know it and obviously if you're having struggles or anything like that getting up you know to higher speeds and all that just make sure you slow it down work on trying to practice things and make sure you nail it clean before you try and take the tempos up to ridiculous levels because while you may think that yes if I just keep on pushing the envelope yeah listen to me it, while you may think yes I can push the envelope to go 
faster and faster and faster, even though it's sloppy, it's not necessarily going to work in your favor. If you really work on building it slow and building it into the muscle memory, you'll be able to get there faster than you think by going slow and slowly increasing the speed as you get cleaner. And plus, it just makes your drumming ultimately better. And in studio, the engineers will love you because you're so clean and you're so precise with your tempos and all that. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. So don't forget to practice with a metronome, all that stuff. Absolutely necessary. So yeah, Ryan Sinat, what an absolute phenomenal job in Rings of Saturn. I thought that was pretty darn good. If you guys liked that, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of Ryan Sinat's playthrough. And with all that being said, y'all, that's the end of this video. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next playthrough review. So cheers and have a great rest of your evening.